Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Brother Steve Eden from right here at Grace Church in Choctaw, Oklahoma. I want to just welcome you, and let's go straight to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the revelation that God, you are Christ-like, that we have seen the face of the Father in the face of the Son. So we just welcome you, Holy Spirit. You're the teacher. Would you continue to grow us in our knowing of Christ and our relationship with the living God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been talking on Sunday about the true nature of God. We've been talking about that God is Christ-like. And so I want to start with Colossians 1, 13 through 15. This is the Amplified Classic Edition. Verse 13, Colossians 1, The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control of Thank you, Jesus, and the dominion of darkness. And he's transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood. That is the forgiveness of our sins. Verse 15. Now he, Christ, is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He is the visible representation of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. And with that, I also have John chapter 1. Boy, I was just quickened with this a moment ago. Let me see. Oh, I don't have that one down. So let me quote it to you. John chapter 1, verse 18. No one has seen God at any time, but the one and only begotten God, some translations say begotten Son of God, who is from the bosom, the inner chamber of the Father's heart, he has made him known to us. There may not be a more life-changing revelation for you to grow in, a truth for you to grow in and latch on to and participate with, then the reality that God is Christ-like. Before uh, I came on tonight, I was spending time uh, in the parking lot here at the church, visiting uh, with a precious saint from right here at Grace Church, and just how she is growing in her knowing. She's come out of a lot of illegalism, been in different uh, a church that taught a lot of turn or burn, hellfire, damnation. You got to look at the whole of scripture and see Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, all these things that God did in his judgment of sin. And he's still doing it today. And she is coming out of all that bondage and false reality into the revelation that God is Christ-like. And guys, it's transforming. Now she's beginning to walk in intimacy with her Heavenly Father. Now she's beginning to experience a spirit-to-spirit, heart-to-heart relationship daily with the one who loves her and gave himself for her. The Spirit of the living God, as seen and revealed and present in the Holy Spirit, but through Jesus Christ, John 14, verse 9, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How refreshing to know Jesus didn't say, if you've seen Sodom and Gomorrah, If you've seen God judge a city in the Old Testament, you've seen the Father. No, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus did not destroy cities. He did not come bringing uh, to, to judge. He did bring judgment. In other words, the revelation, the revealing of the condition of hearts of people. Would they be open to the truth? But he did not wipe out cities. He did not put cancer on people. You know, if, if you're, you believe that your neighbor has cancer because God gave it to him, then praying for your neighbor to be healed would actually be going against the will of God. That makes no sense whatsoever. Jesus did not put sickness on people. He evicted it. He took sickness from people. Uh, I'm reminded immediately of Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes uh, we are healed. So when we want to know who God is at his core, we can't begin with our own ideas of God. That's the mistake we make. We, we go with our own experiences of God. We go with our own human wisdom in reading the Bible and taking, well, you know, if you look at the whole of Scripture, God's not just loving. Look at what he's done here. But Scripture tells you. Scripture tells you multiple times. I gave you two of the passages. There's many more. That if you want to know the true nature of God, who is he at his core, in his heart, towards humanity, look 
at Jesus Christ. And J Jesus Christ himself said that very thing, as I mentioned in John 14, 9. So we cannot begin, if you want to know who God is, you can't begin with your own understanding or man's knowledge or some man's interpretation of who God is. How about we go to God and ask God, Father, how did you choose to reveal yourself personally and perfectly? And he will answer with a resounding, in my son, Jesus Christ, I have revealed my true self. Where Jesus is dimmed as God's revelation of himself, the true nature of God, churches end up in religious legalism, uh, putting law and fear, and I mean fear-mongering, not a healthy reverence for God, but a demonic tormenting fear, uh, lives in the culture of that church. Uh, humanism, I mentioned, where we, we're in our own understanding and experiences of God. But where Jesus is held up as a light and as the true revelation of the nature of our Heavenly Father, then love abounds and the ministry of reconciliation abounds, <laughs> uh, lordship abounds, salvation abounds. I was visiting with a good brother of mine just this morning, and we've been hanging out with a group of men here at Grace Church, and everything that the Lord has been doing with him not just within that group, but in his personal life and walking with the Lord, now the Lord's using him to share that with another brother. You know what that is, guys? God's kingdom is being advanced. Now, what the Lord is putting in this one brother, he is gleefully sharing with another brother. And now he's begun growing and connecting with the Lord and living connected to the Lord on a daily basis. That is the advancement of God's kingdom, one heart at a time. It's the lordship of Jesus Christ moving upon men, uh, men's hearts one heart at a time. And let me tell you, everything in the universe backs that happening. Because as I had mentioned on occasion, the kingdom of God, when Jesus preached the kingdom, when he prayed for the sick, when he taught truth, all of the universe backs that reality because Jesus taught according to the nature of reality. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Let me continue. People say, well, Steve, you say that God is Christ-like, but yeah, what about you know Sodom and Gomorrah? What about where the angel wipes out different cities? Because I see that in Scripture. i got to say it again. Scripture tells you to look to Jesus Christ for the true revelation of who God is. I am not saying God didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm saying Scripture says not to look at Sodom and Gomorrah as the revelation of God's true nature. We look to Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says the law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through uh, Jesus Christ. So it's very important that we utilize the, the written word and do what it says, and that is look to the living word, Jesus Christ, to determine God's true nature. Jesus is crucial to understanding God because otherwise we would read the words, I love you, and in scripture, hey, God loves me, but I would filter them. You would filter those words through your best and worst experiences of love. It's just human nature to do that. But instead, instead, love and the words, I love you, put on human form and walked around in sandals. And God's word became flesh. Not God's word became ink on paper. God's word became flesh. And he, we saw him take up a cross, walk up a hill, and die for my sin, your sin, and the whole world's sin. And now we have an understanding of what love is. Now we know who God is and how he feels towards humanity. I think, you know, that's just huge. It's a huge revelation. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 tonight. Move a little bit forward from where we've been. Verse 29. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with verse 28. So it was when Jesus had ended his teachings that you should build your life upon the rock by doing what he asked you to do that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. So all of this, Matthew 7, 24 through 27, is Jesus saying, hey, if you'll hear my words and act upon them, then the sum total of reality will back that. He's saying you'll build your house upon a solid foundation, and when the storms of life come, you won't be shaken. 
it won't be destroyed. But if you choose to just hear what I'm saying and not do what I'm saying, well, there's nothing backing that. Why? Because of verse 29. Jesus, they marveled his teaching because he taught as one who had great authority. If you eat the word authority here, if you look at it, study it out, it means Jesus taught according to the nature of reality. So everything Jesus taught is in line with reality. He, he was not a philosopher. He never said, well, this could be, maybe try this on for size and see if it works. He basically said, here's the truth. You must come to terms with it. Oh, goodness. And that's why, that's why, guys, God's not out judging and punishing uh, cities and people and destroying them because of their sin. Christ is the propitiation for sin. He satisfied God's wrath against sin. You say, well, Brother Steve, then why is there so much calamity happening? Chicago, for example, different places in the world where there's all this death and chaos because sin is its own punishment. If you live life against its design, then you will experience the, uh, what's the results of living life against its design. Let me say it this way. You cannot live at cross purposes with God, his nature, his kingdom, the things Jesus taught without getting hurt. Not because God is going around hurting people, but because hurt is built into living life against its design. That's what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 7, that, hey, if you'll hear these words and you'll live upon the way, if you'll live according to truth, remember he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. I'm the way you're designed to live. I'm the truth about you. I'm the life that's to be expressed in a human being's body on this planet. If you'll do that, it'll go well with you. If you choose not to, then it's, it's likely that sin is going to run amok, which is missing the mark of what? The way, the truth, and the life sin is missing the mark. Then sin's going to run amok. Chaos is going to run amok, whether it's in your personal life, your marriage, your family, or your city. Jesus taught according to the nature of reality when you and I walk in his way. I'm in him and he's in me. Then the sum total of reality backs us living that way. It's interesting, it says he didn't teach like the scribes. Why? Because the scribes had only the backing of tradition when they taught. The only authority quote they had was from the past. But when Jesus taught, all of the authority from the past, present, and future, and all of eternity backed what he said because Jesus is dealing in truth. Jesus, in teaching and living the kingdom of God, was revealing the reality of how life is to be lived by the one who invented life. You and I did not invent life, so we must come to terms with the one who is life, walking around, demonstrating to us how life is to be lived. And then, praise God, he went to the cross and that life of the Spirit, the life of the Son, right? 1 John 5, 12, he who has the Son has the life. That life he made possible to come and live inside of us that we could walk in his ways. We really could walk upon the way through his grace and his power and our receptivity. But the sum total of reality backs when you and I live according to truth. And we'll say it again. Jesus was supremely confident when he preached the gospel of the kingdom. He announced its arrival. He told us, taught us, demonstrated, modeled how to live, prayed for the sick, meaning humanity well, revealing the true nature of God, that he's not putting sickness on people. He means us well. He means life and health and peace to us. In him doing all that, uh, that, that life is now expressed in and through us. It's a partnership. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and reality backs it. Uh, I don't even have to ask the Lord Lord, would you please anoint me for this task? Would you, uh, would you give me authority to do this? Listen to me. Christ is the anointed one. Jesus' last name is Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one or the anointing. So if I simply walk in the way of Christ, in the way that he leads me in our partnership, you know, because we're roommates, he's in here with me. If I walk according to the way then I'm already anointed because Christ himself is the anointing. 
I don't have to conjure anointing. I don't have to conjure authority from somewhere. If you walk in the way of Christ, there's authority and backing in the way that you're walking and the way that you're living. Boy, that is powerful. In the Old Testament, the anointing would come upon a position. For example, God would anoint a king for that position. But if he was no longer king, he had no more anointing for that. In the New Covenant, Christ, the anointing, is in us. And so when we walk upon the way, when we walk in the reality of our oneness, our partnership with him, we're walking in it and living an anointed life. Oh, man, I'm saving you all kinds of money that you send into the TV preachers so, so they can send you some kind of special anointing prayer or send you a bottle of anointing oil in the mail. I'm telling you, if you'll simply walk with Jesus Christ in the reality of your oneness, you're going to live an anointed life because Christ himself is the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I pray, let those who have ears to hear and eyes to see hear and see what you're revealing, Lord. These truths you're revealing about yourself and about our true identity and our partnership with you. That when we live according to you, when we live according to the way, we walk according to the way, we have all the authority of past, present, and future backing us. All authority in heaven and earth belongs to Christ, and Christ is in us. So we walk in his way. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's my heart, guys. I want to live upon the way. I want to live according to the way, the truth, and the life, the way the Lord leaves me, uh, leads me. I do not want to uh, drift into false realities where nothing is backing me and my behavior other than me. That's a lonely place to be. Uh, there's no power in Steve. There is power in the anointed one, Jesus Christ. There is authority in the anointed one, Jesus Christ. That's why, church, uh, those of you listening, sorry, bad habit. <laughs> That's why that we have an anointing to advance God's kingdom one heart at a time. Why did we choose that vision here at Grace Church? Because the whole of the universe backs and supports the reality of truth and the gospel of the kingdom of God. His spirit living and moving and lording through us is the truth. That is the reality of how life is to be lived. Third John, let's go there. Third John chapter one. There's only one chapter, but up you out there. Third John, help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, I should have marked it. Okay, chapter 1, verse 3. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth, reality. Truth is reality. And they came and testified of the truth that is where? That is in you, just as you walk in the truth. He wants us to walk in truth, in real reality. Verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are actually walking in in truth. Jesus walked in truth because he is the truth. So you and I get to walk and participate with truth and the real reality in Christ. And when we do that, we see the manifestation of the authority and the backing of God himself, Elohim, who made the heavens and the earth. See, he is the inventor of life. We don't determine how life is to be lived. That's what's getting America into trouble. We're just shaking our fist in God's face and saying, we know better than you, you know, what lifestyles are awesome and, uh, you know, how we should live. And yes, we should love everybody. That's true. I'm, I'm totally against bullying and demeaning human beings. Jesus didn't come to do that. But Jesus never used love as an excuse to not tell people the truth. If we love people, we share the truth, and then we also what? We live the truth. We live that reality uh, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus knew when he preached the gospel of the kingdom, when he healed the sick, when he declared God's, that the kingdom of God is God's total answer to man's total need, he knew that the sum total of reality was behind him. And my admonishment to you tonight is let's do the same. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Let's do the same. Let's walk according to the same rule, according to the same truth. You know, in John 8, 32, Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And I know he is the truth, but I also know truth is reality. And so he's saying, if you live according to life's design, according to what 
the, the king of the laws of the universe, the laws of the kingdom of God, if you'll live according to them, you will live a free life. If you choose not to, you will find bondage because I'll say it again, sin is missing the mark. Missing the mark of what? Of the truth, of the real reality. Can I say again, Jesus was not an idealist. He's not a philosopher throwing around philosophies. He's dealing according to the nature of reality. And that's why they marveled at his teaching. He was different than the scribes and the Pharisees because it seemed like there was such force behind the words he said. Why? Because the words he's sharing are true. They are according to reality. So one last passage, Matthew 13, 37 through 39. Jesus answered and said to them, well, let me start with verse 36. Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came and they said, Jesus, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And Jesus said, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. So Jesus is the son of man. He's sowing the good seed. The field is the world. The good seeds that I've sown are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. I find it interesting. A lot of people think um, that it's the tares that are the people of the world. Jesus said the field is the world. I think the tares could be those who look a whole lot like wheat. They look a whole lot like the real thing, but they're not the real thing. They are not sons of the kingdom. And so you could even say maybe it's a whole lot of church people here in America that within churches we have wheat and we have tares. We have good seeds, let me say it that way, and we have tares. Uh, growing up right by each other. And my admonishment tonight is, hey, we are sons of the kingdom. We are uh, offspring, sons and daughters, children of the real reality of the kingdom of God. The laws that are at work, not only all around us, but now at work in our members because the kingdom of God has been placed within us in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Where? It's in the Holy Spirit. So through the lordship of the one who is reality, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, we ourselves become sons of the kingdom. So listen to me. We are those being sown, according to Jesus, we are those being sown into this world. We are not waiting around for God to do something. He did do something. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to radically transform it. And then guess what? He multiplied that son into sons and daughters of the kingdom, you and I, and he's still sowing good seed into the world. That good seed is you and me. Let us take up the uh, commission of the Lord to make a difference in the lives of people around us. It's not a burdensome thing, and let me tell you why. Sharing the reality, the truth of Jesus Christ, your love for him, what he can do, how he can affect uh, your friend, your co-worker's marriage, how he can change their life, their heart, their perspective, that's not, not a hard thing. It's not a sweat. You know, don't sweat it. Why? Because you're simply sharing according to the nature of reality. The spirit of truth himself is in you now to be able to disclose, as I said earlier, my friend, a good brother I've been uh, walking with, now is being utilized to the Lord to help a friend of his, also a friend of mine, but another man, and uh, he's beginning to see the nature of reality, the truth of the living God at work in his heart, and he's sharing it with others. That's not a burdensome thing, because Everything in heaven and earth, all authority in heaven and earth is backing us simply advancing the kingdom of God. We are not responsible for people's choices, whether they say yes, no, or they're indifferent. But we are responsible to allow that light. Let your light so shine that men would see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Uh, when the kingdom of God is lived and preached and revealed, I'm telling you, Heaven and earth is backing you when you're walking upon the way. So I kind of tag-teamed a couple of things, a couple of thoughts tonight. 
Jesus Christ is the revelation of the true nature of God. And now we're even ending here that we're sons of the kingdom that are being sown into this earth to transform the lives of others through the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Why is that important, those two things? Because if you don't know who the Father really is at his core, you will wipe your hands of people's calamity. Uh, you know, if, if a flood came to Las Vegas tomorrow, you wouldn't think twice of running in there and helping people whose lives have been destroyed, maybe lost loved ones, if you have believed the deception that God is the one who sent the flood into Vegas to kill all those people. No, when you understand the true nature of God has been revealed through Jesus Christ, you want to run in to help those who need to get a picture of who God really is. Father, I thank you tonight for the good word of God. Oh, I thank you for the shift that is happening. I believe not just at Grace Church, but in Choctaw, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma County, the state of Oklahoma. Lord, you are calling us by name. You are calling us to walk upon the way. May we now begin to experience that all of reality backs us following the way, the truth, and the life. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.